Hey guys, what is up? My name is Tequisha and this is our freedom song and I am so excited about today. I'm going to show you three different inexpensive ways that we have trellised things in our garden, specifically tomatoes and cucumbers. Now I wanted to find ways that would be very beautiful, right? But also still very budget friendly. I'm always looking for budget friendly ideas. I do love budget friendly. I also love beauty. So I love when I can combine those two. Throughout this video, you happen to hear that saw in the back. That is because Thomas, or catch a glimpse of him, he is working on our greenhouse today. And I am just overwhelmed with gratitude about how it's coming together, how it's looking. We are using things that we found on the side of the road. We found some windows at the restore for low, 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 as well as at the actual dump. We found these gorgeous windows, y'all. Like, who threw these away? I mean, they're absolutely stunning. And so, we are so excited about how that is coming along and we cannot wait to show you all the things when it is done. Continue to give you sneak peeks along the way, but when it's all done, we will show you and explain and do a tour and all the things so that you guys can see how we come to our finished product. But for today's video, let's go ahead and get to this trellis video I said that I was going to be hopeful about this tomato and so I really wanted to give an update to say that everything looks fantastic and it has bounced back beautifully. Today you're going to see me using a lot of bamboo. If you are new here, we this container garden area was filled with bamboo. I'm talking about 50, 70 feet, like huge bamboo. And so we cut it all down and we are currently just slowly using it whenever we can. So yes, we are using a lot of bamboo. And if you don't have bamboo, don't worry. I hope that you are just inspired to see what resources that you have that you can use as well. So I hope this video will be so inspiring to you. Let's get to it. Okay, so the first method that I want to show you that we are using in our garden is called the lower and lean method. And it is such a great method to use for indeterminate tomatoes. These tomatoes have grown so fast. So it was definitely time to go ahead and give these a nice trim. Here I focus on a lower trim, but as they grow up, I will be doing a middle trim as well, just to promote good airflow. Okay, so I'm going to be using this jute cord as well as these plant clips to show a variation of the lower and lean. I purchased both of these from Dollar Tree. Okay, so I put my bamboo as high as I could reach. So that's how I determined how high I want it to be um, because I don't want to have to get on a ladder to get these tomatoes if they do grow eight feet tall <laughs> and so I, I just reached up and that's how I determined where I wanted my bamboo to go and so all I did was I'm taking this jute string right here and I am wrapping it all around once so it's double the height After making all those cuts of string, I still have quite a bit left. So these packs come with small and um, as well as large plant clips. The large works really, really great for um, clipping the tomatoes onto a trellis. The small ones, I had yet to find anything that they were really good for, but actually this is perfect for this method. And so let me show you how I'm going to add the clip. So on one end of the string, I'm just going to tie the clip onto that or tie the string onto the clip. Just like that. Super simple. 
now that that's in focus. So I'm just going to tie that. Just like that. And I'm actually going to clip this onto the bottom of the tomato. So I clipped it all the way to the very bottom of the base of the tomato. What I'm going to do with the string that's attached to the bottom of the tomato is I'm going to wrap this around the whole tomato. Oh, that's interesting. Something's in there eating. I'm just going to cut this whole leaf off actually. I'm going to prune that. And then after I prune that, I'm going to wrap this string right around the whole tomato to support it. Just round and round and round we go. And then I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with the second string after I get it all wrapped. Okay, so for anybody who doesn't really understand what's going on here, I have been there. And some things that seem that people tag as self-explanatory may not be for everybody. And so I'm here for you. So what we've essentially done is made a pulley system. We've wrapped the tomato up with this string all around it. And this is my other loose end. And if you watch closely, you'll see that whenever I give tension on the tomato you see how it straightens up so pulley system and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this um, nice and tight and then I'm going to uh, you keep this string long and tie my other clip onto this end of the string I'm gonna tie my other clip onto this and then after I tie it, I'm going to clip it at the base of the tomato around the same spot. So I'm just going to pull this string down to the base of the tomato so that I can make sure that I am um, going to have a nice taut string. And then I'm just going to clip it. Just wrap the string around here and I'm just going to clip it to the bottom and you see I have all of this extra string left that I'm still just going to keep as this tomato grows the string that I used to wrap the tomato with I'm going to continue to use that same string to wrap around the tomato and how I'll have extra string to do that is I'll just unloosen at the bottom with the second string this method where um, people just keep their yarn at the top and then you could have a spool that you just unwind as you go. Um, but this is the way that I'm doing it. I feel like it's simple enough and I know I'll have enough string because this height is about six feet and this string is double the size. And so unless my tomatoes want to grow 12 feet, um, I should definitely have enough string. The cool thing about this method is when the tomatoes reach the top, what you do is then you would lower the string. You would cut off any of the deadness and foliage um, that's no longer producing on the plant, and then you would allow it to continue to grow. Another very simple way of doing the same method would be to use these landscape pens. If you have some landscape pens or if that's what you prefer to purchase. I love landscape pens. I would say two of my favorite things in the garden to use is zip ties, number one, and landscape pens. They work for so many different things. And so the idea is that you could do the same thing or you can inter interchange it with the clips. You can do clips, clip it to the bottom, or if you just wanna do landscape pens, all you have to do is just wrap the string around the lands landscape pen and then place it into the ground and then your other your second string wrap it and place it into the ground as well and so that is a really secure and simple way to do this same exact method
Okay, so next up, I'm going to be creating a grid, so a net. And this looks so, so cool. And it looks harder <laughs> than it actually is to do. I absolutely love the way it turned out. I also thought this was a good opportunity to encourage all of you who are out there working in the garden alone. I know often you see that we have so many helping hands here and it's such a blessing. I decided to do this on my own for all of you out there who are just needing some encouragement to be able to get out there and put your hands to the plow. You guys are amazing. There's so many things that you can do, even if they're done with just your two hands. Okay, so as you can see, what I've done is just looped a piece of twine over it. So this is double. And next, what we're gonna do is tie it here and take it from one side all the way to the other side to make a grid and then I'll show you how we're going to lock in our string. Okay, so now that we have our twine going from one side to the other, what we're gonna do is take this and we're gonna go under and over to create our tie for our netting. Okay, so let me show you what this looks like. So here's our string and I'm going to go under and then over. You see how simple that is? I'm going to go under and over the string just like that So my daughter had been in our hoop house making tags for um, our cucumbers and she was so intrigued by this net. And so, although I know I just encouraged you guys that you could do it by yourself, listen, this isn't me needing help. This is actually her just wanting to know. And so I could not pass up a hands-on experience for her to let her actually do one roll by herself so that she could understand how simple it was. Okay, so all of the under and overs are complete. So cool, right? I just think that this is so simple and yet it looks so much more complicated than it is. So what we have here is our end. And so there's a couple options. So I could take a landscape pin and put tie this to the landscape pin and push it down and it would make it a nice taut rope. Or I can just go ahead and just tie this off. Just make a little knot and tie it off. I'm just gonna make sure this is exactly where I want it, all the way down. I'm just kind of pulling, you see the slack? I'm just pulling that to take out the slack and to make it nice and tight. And once I get to the end, I'm going to just tie it. I can get my finger out. So that's nice and tight, like how I want it to be. Now I'm just gonna tie it off.
nice and tight. So before you tie it off, you still have so much movement with the string. So I was able to adjust it, line it up, make it nice and straight, as well as span it out the distance I wanted it to be. So for our distance, I did it about a hand span wide and I just went with that all the way across. It's great because you can customize it to exactly the size that you want. If you want your squares to be smaller, you can adjust all of your rope and string and you can make it as big or as small as you would like. So I am going to pull this tightly and place a landscape pin right at where the string touches the ground. I'm gonna tie the landscape pin right to that spot. I am so happy and satisfied with the way that this turned out. It is so nice, it adds so much character and beauty to the garden, and it was so simple to do. I love it. Okay, so the final trellis that I'm going to be showing you today is going to be the Florida weave. And the challenge with this is doing it in this raised bed. I knew that I didn't wanna puncture the bed in any way by screwing through it to screw into the bamboo. So I just had to be creative and figure out how I could make the structure stand strong enough in order to support the tomatoes. And so what I ended up doing was pushing it down on each side and creating a frame. So what you see is a square. And I thought that would be so cool because as the tomatoes are growing, it's going to be like a picture frame. I'm like, oh my goodness, when I walk into the garden and that's there, it's going to be so lovely to see. And so that's what I decided to do. I'm using zip ties for all of the attachments. And what I'm doing essentially is creating a X and that really helps secure the bamboo nice and tight. Okay, so for the Florida weave, we are going to tie two pieces of string together on one side, crisscross it like that, make an X, wrap it around the tomato, and then make another X. You are going to continue this pattern for your entire row. And when you get to the end of the row, you make your final X and then wrap it around your post. So you're gonna to wanna to do this to support the height of your tomato. So in this bed, I only did one, but you will see in the second bed, I actually did two lines of weave because the tomatoes are actually a little bit taller on that side. And as the tomatoes grow, we will just add a new weave to support them. These tomatoes are already so big, so leaving in the stake actually helped to weave around them. I am so relieved to finally have all of these tomatoes trellis. Like it's been hanging over me because <laughs> I knew I needed to get out here and get this done. And so I just feel so fantastic knowing that all of these tomatoes are trellised and supported and they are pruned and they are just ready to grow, have a nice air flow and all the things and be successful. 
and I'm so excited. Another really great trellis idea is something like what we've done here with these um, sprickly parts, prickly parts of the bamboo. I just stuck them in the fence and made a trellis for these pole beans and y'all they are actually attaching themselves to it and I'm so excited about that. I also went all around the garden and added these little plant clips to the tomatoes that were on either a cattle panel or sitting next to a fence to hold them up. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. We appreciate each and every one of you. I do hope that you are inspired to get into your garden and figure out what you need to do to get it done. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us. I look forward to seeing you guys in that comment section. What is growing in your garden? Have you been out there? Do you have all the things done that you have set your heart to do? I can't wait to chat with you guys. See you guys next time.